Hi, my name is Jeffrey Berger. I am a cardiologist um, at NYU School of Medicine. I'm an associate professor of both medicine and surgery, and I direct the Center for the Prevention of Cardiovascular Disease. You are listening to the interview with the surgeon, with the surgeon agent. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining Interview with the Surgeon. Today, we welcome Dr. Jeffrey Berger, Director of the Center of Prevention of Cardiovascular Disease. Doc, how are we doing today? Well, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being with us. So, you know, getting started, what were your goals and aspirations during your residency and how those changed throughout your fellowship? Sure. So I think when I became a resident, I was interested in becoming the best physician that I could be. Um, I learned early on that um, you learn a lot in medical school, in residency, um, of interacting with some of the physicians who were taking care of patients for many years, for decades. Um, um, they struggled a little bit with new information and sort of had to fig- had to sort of combine new information with what they learned. So I, I, I try very hard just to sort of, you know, leverage all, all the information out there, all the, um, you know, accumulating data, try to help take care of my patients. But at that time, I also thought very hard that I, I, I really did not want to be a physician who practiced medicine from 10 years ago or 20 years ago. I wanted to sort of be involved in the fluidity of medicine. And I think that shaped my interest in doing more academic medicine. And so in taking us through that fellowship year, what was your mentality into your first job search and how that perspective changed the beginning years of your career? Sure. So I, I did my fellowship in cardiology um, at Duke University. Um, I, I was, um, um, it was an incredible experience. I learned so much. It was, it was very um, 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 focused on becoming an expert in a specific area. I, I was very interested in the area of thrombosis, understanding clotting, understanding why are young people having heart attacks or clots in their coronary arteries? Why are they having strokes um, um, without usual risk factors? It got me really interested in understanding um, um, the role of platelets. I mean, we use drugs that target platelets all the time. And I, I, I would think a lot about, well, it's sort of odd. When, when you think about lowering cholesterol, you measure cholesterol. When you think about lowering blood pressure, you measure blood pressure. But when you think about using a platelet inhibiting drug or a platelet directed drug, you don't measure anything. I found that quite odd in the 21st century. So I, I, I wanted a job that would allow me to, you know, work with some really smart individuals, be at the forefront of medicine, um, um, but also have a large role in the scientific sort of research world. Now, what would you say were some of the keys of your success that shaped your early career as you climbed the ranks in the academic world? So I think I think um, 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 I, I always hear sort of in the back of my mind what, what my father told me, which is to be successful at something, you have to work very hard. Whatever you do, right? Meaning success only comes with hard work. So you want to make sure that you like what you do. So I, I really like what I do. I, I like medicine. I, I, I tell a lot of people now, you know, medicine is amazing, right? You read so much about what other people um, um, have done in their careers. What I think is really cool is to actually do, right? When you uncover a new, you know, surgical approach, when you sort of identify a new way of taking care of patients, or when you find something in the lab or do a new clinical trial, you're actually writing what other people are going to read about in the future. To me, that's sort of amazing. Um, that was really what I became very interested in. Now, working with residents and fellows, what advice do you have for them when they're graduating and entering the professional job market for the first time? Sure, I tell them, first of all, remember that um, 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 you have done a lot to get to where you are, right? Almost anyone who goes through the system is extraordinarily bright. You know, everyone is. They are motivated. They sort of gotten to this point. 
I think they, they do not teach you in medical school how to um, 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 argue or how to sort of um, um, work for yourself, work for that first job. Clearly, I think you have to give yourself more credit than you probably thought you should. Um, I also think it's important to get the job that is suitable and right for you. You know, I think, I think one of the unfortunate things is that most people who, who come into medicine are extraordinarily bright, extraordinarily type A, and they constantly think about what is the best. And I remind people what the best is for one person is not the best for another. So remember what it is that you like. You're going to wake up every single day and do, you know, and, and do this job for years, decades, maybe even many decades. So you want to make sure you like it. If you like it, you know, I, I tell people when they apply for medical school or residency or fellowship, um, 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 if you like it, it's sort of like being a kid in a candy shop, right? Where wherever you go, you know, assuming you like it, it's sort of like candy, right? And it doesn't matter if it's the blue one or the green one or the red one, right? Because it's all good. You just have to figure out, you know, what will make you happy um, 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 in life at this time and, and sort of go there. At NYU, what are you looking for in candidates when you've got medical students applying for residency spots and also residents applying for fellowship spots? So I, I can't talk for NYU as a whole. I can talk what I look for, which is I, I look for people that are persevering. I look at people that you know, as I said, everyone's bright, right? So I want people that are sort of going to follow through. I want people that sort of when they try something and they start something, they continue. I want to see people who, you know, um, 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 you know, are passionate about it. I feel like when you are passionate about something, you are much likely, much more likely to be successful. So I, to me, all of those things come together I, I expect everyone to be very bright, and now it's just sort of finding out the other um, um, things, which I think are equally important. Yeah, we dealt with the pandemic in 2020, and also still now in 2021, and usually a lot of folks would be able to go to national conferences to meet people like yourself. With that not happening right now, what advice do you have for the graduating class regarding their networking and outreaching process in a virtual world? So I think I think the world has changed. Um, 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 obviously COVID had a major impact, but I think it's changed even beforehand. Um, I remember when I was training, um, um, I would work with a lot of people at my local university institution, but I also worked with people around the country and now around the world. And I, I, I remind people that most research does not occur in a silo. Most research occurs in collaboration. I think the NIH looks very favorably on collaborative research. I think that just as we're having this conversation and I love your background, um, you know, you do not have to be next to the person who you're doing research with. You do not have to be next to the person who is mentoring you. We live in a virtual world. Um, I think this um, virus has, you know, sort of really demonstrated that to an even greater degree. But I think I, I, I would just recommend and remind everyone that, you know, people are nice and friendly and approachable and do not feel that you need to make an appointment to see someone, like just reach out to, to people. And I, I, I tell people who reach out to me, you know, do not take silence as my ignoring you can imagine that busy people get many hundreds of emails a day. And if, if you want something, persevere, follow up. Uh, because I think people in general want to help others. I think most, meaning personally, I would not be where I am today if it were not for my many mentors along the way. So I, I, I have an interest and I think many have an interest in sort of mentoring, you know, the the future. And I think, I think that's sort of one of the beauties of our field. Now you've built a successful lab at NYU. Can you talk about the creation behind that and where you see that going in the future? Um, sure. Um, so, so I, I, I feel very fortunate. As I said, I've worked with a lot of great people. I, I have always 
um, been interested in, you know, the evolution of the field that I work in. And I feel there are two, probably three sort of really important ways to sort of make change. One is identifying novel mechanisms. Two is taking those and, you know, bringing it to clinical trials. And then three is sort of bringing it to populations. I, I tried very hard to work with either, you know, colleagues with different areas of expertise um, 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 in these topics, because I think when you combine them, I think that's sort of helpful. I think in the past, people would ask a question about a certain molecule or a certain pathway or a certain drug. And I think in today, it's more about what is your clinical question? And then how can you use the lab to answer it? How can you use a clinical trial to answer it? How can you use, you know, population-based data, um, AI, you know, artificial intelligence is sort of huge. So I, I, I think that's what we try to do. Um, um, I mentioned earlier, I never understood why it is that when you're thinking about aspirin to prevent the first heart attack or stroke, we don't just measure platelet function. Well, I learned that nobody really knows how to. So we've spent a lot of time measuring platelet function. And I feel like we have a very good way of doing it that correlates with future risk of a platelet mediated event, like a heart attack or stroke. But it's not gonna stop there, right? It's then taking that to see, can we now use this to see who would benefit, right? Because everything has benefit and risk. So it's not just coming up with ideas, it's then testing those ideas. And then after you find a certain drug or a certain therapy, then you wanna sort of make sure patients get them, right? Do you know how many effective drugs we have that patients still do not get? So it's, it's sort of a combination. And I think that's really one of the fun things that I do is that I get to do a little bit of everything. So if a resident or a fellow wants to reach out to you, maybe to pick your brain or have you potentially be a mentor to them, uh, what advice do you have for them in reaching out to folks like yourself? Email them. <laughs> Meaning it's, it's, it is not difficult, you know? Um, um, I, I think it's important though to not um, have a form letter where you're like, dear X, I recently read your article on XXX. I like what you do. Would like I, I would be a little bit more personal. I would sort of make the person think that you've actually done a drop more than just find their name in a database. I probably get I don't know, probably five or ten emails um, a day about this from people around the world, and I would say ninety-two percent of them are just form emails, and I don't respond to because I, I just think if somebody can't take the time to um, you know, write a personal email. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty busy. So to me, that is really important, but otherwise, um, you know, I think, I think, I think people like myself, um, and others, I, I think are very approachable and I would write, I would encourage people to reach out to, you know, um, um, people who they think would be helpful for them. We hope you enjoyed this episode of interview with the surgeon until next time, stay focused and keep following your dreams.